Hello, my name is Stephen Daniel with the Avaya Serviceability Engineering Team. This video is about how to connect and set up the ION SA5600 SAL Avaya SAL Edition Secure Appliance. This tutorial will provide the necessary steps required to connect and power up the ION SA5600 SAL appliance prior to its configuration. About the SA5600 SAL, it is produced and manufactured by ION Networks and was built to run the standard Avaya Secure Access Link Gateway software. It was architected as a low-cost, special-purpose appliance designed to provide server-grade reliability at a fraction of the cost. It is built with a secure architecture in mind with one layer of the appliance running the ION management software and another isolated layer running the CentOS host operating system and cell gateway application. Also, time to deploy is drastically reduced as the appliance comes pre-installed with the CentOS operating system and Secure Access Link Gateway software and requires very minimal configuration. With respect to the SA5600 specifications for the physical dimensions, the unit is 12 inches wide, 1.75 inches high, and 11 inches in depth, weighing approximately 6 pounds. For IP connectivity, it has two 10 100 1000 Ethernet ports. For administration and management, it has a local serial aux port and also offers SSH connectivity via the network port. With performance and capacity, it runs a 1.2 GHz VIA Nano X2 dual core processor. For hard disk drive storage capacity, it has 160 GB. For system memory, 2 GB. And also offers front panel LEDs for power and activity. Please note, the SA5600 does have ports for dial-up connectivity with an internal V.90 56K flex modem accepting an analog RG11 or ISDN BRI connection. Let's first run through what you'll need before we begin connecting and setting up the SA5600. First, of course, you'll need the secure appliance itself. Also, in addition to the unit and setup guide, you should have also received in your package one power supply, a DB9 6-foot null modem cable or serial cable, and a 7-foot Cat5 Ethernet cable, all of which we'll need to connect to our device. Once you have all of the required components, you're set to go. Let's first discuss the ports at the rear of the device before we make any connections. To the right, we have a modem port and two host port connections, labeled host 1 and host 2, as well as the power connector port. As mentioned in the introductory slide, the modem port supports dial-up connectivity using an RG11 or ISDN BRI connection. This connectivity option may be used by a third-party service provider for remote access and administration at the ION interface. You may also elect to use this modem connectivity option to serve as an emergency out-of-band interface. At present, Avaya or Avaya Support Services does not support the modem connectivity option with the cell gateway application. On the left side of the box, moving from left to right, we have PS2 mouse and keyboard connections, a parallel port, a VGA video out port for an external monitor, a 9-pin serial port over which will communicate and configure the device, four USB ports, two Ethernet ports for network connectivity, and finally audio connections for external speakers or a microphone. Though this box does have a multitude of connections, only two are absolutely essential. The 9-pin serial port for configuring the device and the left network interface port for connecting the SA5600 to your network. This interface is network port 1 all of the ports may be used if you would like to connect the SA5600 to an external keyboard, monitor, and mouse for local console access, though this is not required. Great, now that we're familiar with the ports, let's first connect the female end of our 9-pin serial cable to the 9-pin aux port. Next, let's connect one end of our Cat5 network cable to Ethernet port 1. Again, this is the leftmost Ethernet interface. You should now have connections to the rear of the SA5600 as illustrated here. Moving on, we'll next need to connect the other end of our network cable to an Ethernet switch. And for our serial connection, we're going to connect the other end of the DB9 serial cable to a serial port on your PC. If your PC does not have a serial port, you can use a simple USB to serial adapter like the one I have shown here to complete your configuration. Simply connect the end of the serial cable 
to the serial end of the adapter and the USB end to a USB port on your computer. Finally, with our power supply receiving power from a wall outlet, let's go ahead and now connect the other end of the power adapter to the power supply port. The SA5600 will now begin booting up. You should first see the blue power LED come on and remain steady. Then, after a few moments, the activity light will begin to flicker intermittently and will eventually pick up in frequency. The total boot time is about a minute and a half to two minutes, though for the purpose of this demonstration, it has been accelerated here to about 35 seconds. And that's all there is to it. Your SA5600 is now ready to be configured and initialized via the serial connection. Again, please visit our Viamentor YouTube channel and search SA5600 or Secure Access Link for a video tutorial on configuring and initializing the SA5600 appliance over the serial cable. Thank you for your time today. We welcome comments, questions, and feedback at mentor at avaya.com or on Twitter at aviamentor. For more details or related information, please visit support at avaya.com. Thank you for choosing Avaya.